Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about five brushless motor facts that you may have not ever heard before. If you happen to have a fact of your own that is not covered in this video and you think it's one of those facts that no one has ever heard of, drop it in the comment section below. Now let's get started and start off with fact number one. Brushless motors come in all different size ranges, all the way from a typical small size of 28 millimeters to a typical larger size of a 56 millimeter diameter. Now, most motors within this range can actually rev up to about 60,000 RPM, and that is quite a bit. But did you know that some motors can actually go far beyond the 60,000 RPM, upwards of even 80,000 RPM or higher? Now, one would ask, why would a motor manufacturer offer up on the market a motor that can deliver that kind of output RPM? Well, to explain this, what I want to do is actually draw a comparison between internal combustion engines and electric motors. Now, typically, I do not like this because there are not a lot of parallels that you can actually draw between electric motors and internal combustions. They are very different and operate on a completely different principle. However, for the point that I want to make, physics doesn't change, and that's what we're going to be talking about. If you look at RPM and how it relates to power output, it is a lot easier to get more power out of a higher amount of RPM. The perfect example is to look at the internal combustion engines used in racing. If you were to look at the engines found in F1 cars, sport bikes, or even race cars, you will see that they output a significant amount of RPM, typically above 10,000 RPM. And that is quite a lot, considering that the average car, family car that is found on the streets today, rev to about 6,000 to 6,500 RPM. And that is because those race cars, those race engines, need to access the higher RPM band in order to make a significant amount of power, especially for the actual physical size that they are. The example here for internal combustion engines is identical to our motors. It's a lot easier for us to get more power using a 60,000 RPM rated motor at about the 45,000 mark versus trying to use that exact same motor at 25,000 RPM. Therefore, the big takeaway from this is if you have a motor that has a maximum at 60,000 RPM, don't operate that motor at a maximum of 10,000 RPM. You are going to be significantly reducing the amount of potential output that you can get out of that motor. Now let's talk about the second fact that we have for today. And that has to do with the magnets that are found within our brushless motors. Now, if you've ever taken apart one of your motor, you will realize that you have a rotor found inside there. And that rotor contains a rare earth magnet in most of them on the market today. The magnets found within our motor happens to be known as a neodymium magnet. This is a rare earth magnet that is extremely strong and we need a strong magnet so that we can produce a significant amount of power with our motor. Now there's a couple disadvantages to this magnet. One, because they're super strong, it makes it very dangerous to actually remove the rotor and then replace it. If you're replacing the rotor within your motor, it's a very good idea to pay attention to how you're actually inserting that rotor back in. You want to make sure you do it in such a way where you're not going to pinch your fingers. As soon as that rotor gets very close to that motor, it's going to want to snap in very aggressively. And that's what makes it dangerous. Another point to make about these neodymium magnets is that they are extremely brittle. Depending on how your rotor is actually constructed, if you come in close contact with another part of the motor, you can actually damage and have part of the rotor chip right off. Now it's important to be very careful when you're inserting that rotor back into your motor for those couple points. Now the last point that we have about the neodymium magnets that are found within our motor is that they are greatly affected by temperature. They lose about 0.1% of their strength for every one degree Celsius of temperature increase. So you can imagine that if you have a temperature increase of your motor from let's say 20 degrees Celsius up to about 80 degrees degrees Celsius, you will see about a 6% drop in the strength of those motors. This is not the same case if you were to actually go the other way and have these magnets subjected to colder temperatures. 
So at the end of the day, just like the rest of the components within our power system, we want to make sure that we are keeping our motor as cool as possible so that we don't lose out on the strength of those magnets. Now this brings us right into fact number three where the constants within our motor may not be as constant as you thought they were. For example, we just talked about how magnets can actually lose the strength based on a temperature increase. Well, the same thing can happen to the KV value of our motor. If we actually increase the temperature of our motor, we're decreasing the strength of those magnets, which can have a result of increasing the KV. Now, of course, we're only talking about a 5% in our last example of the strength of the magnet decreasing. So the actual effect on the KV is going to be somewhat insignificant, but it is still happening. Aside from that, and this is bending the rules a little bit because the constant is specifically for zero load, but as soon as you do start to load that motor, the KV of your motor is going to start to decrease, which will change the total amount of RPM that you actually are able to get out of that motor. On this channel, all the RPM ranges that we have talked about in other videos already have this taken into consideration. So there's no need to go and change the amount of total RPM that has already been suggested to you. Fact number four happens to do with the resistance found within our motor. The idea is the resistance is provided as a specification right from the motor manufacturer. But the truth is this resistance value does not stay the same. It actually changes. As soon as the motor starts to become a little bit hot, that changes the overall effect of the resistance. Heat, just like it did to our neodymium magnet, it has a negative effect on the winding within our motor. In fact, what happens is the winding resistance increases as the heat of your motor increases. Now for the most part, heat within any electrical component actually will increase the amount of total resistance. Whether it's the wire found within your motor or the wire found on your speed control or even the wire found on your battery. Heat built up within your lithium polymer battery pack actually happens to decrease the total amount of cell resistance that you would find. If you elevate the temperature of your battery pack from room temperature up 10 degrees Celsius, for example, your battery pack's internal resistance will actually decrease. Now the overall effect that happens within this battery is not because of an electrical characteristic. It's more because of a chemical characteristic that's happening within the battery pack. Now let's move on to fact number five, our last fact for the video. Have you ever seen on a brushless motor how it's been labeled as a BLDC? Well, this acronym actually stands for brushless DC. When in fact, our brushless motors do not operate on DC voltage. If you feed them DC voltage, you will blow them out like there's no tomorrow. They actually need a commutated AC voltage in order to actually function correctly. What is true about the DC does not actually happen at the motor, but it happens at your battery pack. The power that eventually makes its way into the motor starts off as DC at the battery pack, and then that power goes to your your speed control and the speed control is responsible for taking that DC power and converting it into three phase AC so that your brushless motor is able to operate correctly. Well, there you have it. We have covered five facts about brushless motors that you may not have known. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Monday.